how that Daniel was standing for the Lord um, un under the situation that he was in. I think the last time we, we came together, we looked at the, the idolatry of Marduk, right? And we, we looked at the uh, Babylonian, where uh, the Babylon that was built, um, uh, the, the gate of the gods, and how that Daniel had to stand in that environment. And remember, he didn't choose to be a missionary. Uh, he wasn't called into it, say like Jonah, who then tried to go the opposite direction. <laughs> he didn't want to deal with Nineveh. And I don't blame him. If you and I were there in Israel and these guys came down ambushing us all the time, I might not want to go be a missionary in Nineveh either. Um, uh, there's two. There's there's many sides to that. Um, we we see Jonah's failure and, and attitude and disappointment and weirdness actually, uh, <laughs> um, but you know we we weren't there, uh, but God mightily used him. Uh, Daniel was captive. He was brought over captive, and how easily would it have been to say, "Well, I'm captive. What can I do?" I've been taken away from my own country, and I'm captive here. But uh, you see that God, uh, Daniel, was a man of faith. Uh, kind of like Joseph when he was undergoing his captivity, if you will. And they, their, their life was to live for the Lord. Uh, the kingdom business was their business. They didn't deviate from what the law said. They would not eat the king's table uh, for, with those, with those um, meals and meat that was offered to idols. Uh, they would not do so. They would not bow down to the king's image. They stood for God in those circumstances. And I think last time that's what we looked at. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Now what I didn't mark is where I left off. Uh, I think we got to Isaiah 14, did we not? Satan, the fall of Babylon. We got to that. And Luke 4, um, the kingdoms of the world, I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And what's the answer that our Lord gave? Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And certainly um, our Lord tested of course, he could not fail, uh, but nonetheless, that test, and that test is for us today. Who do we worship? Who do we serve? And so uh, I want to continue to look at that together today because this is synonymous all the way through the prophets. Uh, boy, if you think the prophets had it easy, think again. Uh, their lives were under the gun Constantly, These kings didn't want to hear one bit what they had to say, although there was some revivals there, such as Hezekiah uh, and uh, Josiah and others. There was some, re there was some um, revivals, but for the most part, and they had to watch as these wicked and evil kings brought in the idolatry and the worship of the nations. And finally, there's no remedy, God says. There's no remedy. And so, uh, and that's where we are with Daniel. So I, I want us to appreciate. We think we got a bad environment. Well, maybe we do. But you know, the darker it is, the brighter the light shines. Right? Um, I'd like to turn and look at our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, look in the Gospel of John, please. The Gospel of John. Uh, chapter 19. Uh, you see, it is important that we uh, notice Daniel says, This is the interpretation, O king. That word interpretation is very important to us. I have, um, I think I've brought that out before, right? Interpretation and revelation and manifestation. And the interp God's interpretation cannot be altered. It's his word. 
And um, as we're looking in the Gospel of John, I'd like for us to look even at our Lord Jesus Christ. And may I say, imagine, imagine if you could have um, ten legions of angels at your behest. <laughs> You know, I, I, we go through trials, and we go through trials sometimes, be, and there's, we're pretty much, we feel helpless. Let, let me think, just think about this for one minute. Then said Jesus unto him, put up again thy sword into its place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. He's talking to Peter. Peter's going to whip out and whip everybody in, in the mob, I guess. I don't know what Peter had in mind here. And uh, he took a shot at Malchus and got his ear. That's what happens when fishermen spar. <laughs> With swords. And God had to put the ear back on. That's not what we're going to do right now. There'll be the day for the sword, but this wasn't it. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. But how, but how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? In the same hour said Jesus to the multitudes, Are ye come out against a th as, a, as against a thief with swords and clubs to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and ye laid no hand on me. But all this was done, why? that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples did what? What happened to prison and to death will follow thee? Yes, Lord, we are able. Able to do what? <laughs> Run? <laughs> They fled. Now, I, I want us to think about this for a minute as we are about to go through this interview. Never forget that when we're looking at Jesus Christ, regardless, birth, ministry, cross, resurrection, post-ministry, he's gone. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Second thought I want you to think about. This is the king. This is our king. We're in his kingdom. And I want you to take note what the king of our kingdom is doing here. The issue in Matthew was what? That the scriptures might be what? Fulfilled the authority of the scriptures. Not going to be altered. Our Lord Jesus Christ was subject to what the law and the prophets said. I want you to think about that. He was subject to the commandment of the Father. That's the king of the kingdom. He's also marked. The perfect servant, isn't he? He's also from the Gospel of John, the deity of God. He's all of those things. And notice in chapter 19 of John now, if you will. Then Pilate, therefore, took Jesus and scourged him. Why? There's no charges. Uh, everybody running around protesting for justice. Well, where's the justice here? Our Lord wasn't a, a rebel rouser. <laughs> he didn't participate in sedition against the government. No. And notice, and the soldiers plated a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. And again, and saith unto him, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. 
Isn't this kind of a funny way to present and handle a person with whom is no fault? And didn't our Lord warn that the kingdom of God will suffer what? Yeah. Yeah. Then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns, purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out saying, Crucify him. Crucify him. And Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I have no fault in him. I really do think, and I don't think uh, Pilate was trying to advocate for Jesus, I think he just wanted this thing to go away. I really do. Uh, he doesn't want to have an insurrection and have to explain that to Caesar. I'm sure that would be a most uncomfortable position. <laughs> you take him and, and you do with him as you... That he's, he's trying to get out of it. And notice, if you will, the Jews answered him, we have a law, and by our law he ought to die because he made himself the Son of God. Well, no, he didn't do that because Jesus is never made or created. He's the creator. He is the Son of God. But now notice, if you will, when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. We've got Pilate shaking in his boots here. It isn't going to go away. <laughs> he thought he could get by and uh, give him a pound of flesh here a little bit. That'd satisfy him. He'd get out of it. Now notice, if you will, he went again into the judgment hall and saith unto Jesus, from where art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Uh, this isn't, uh, he's not getting the answers he wants. It's, it's not getting any easier. And notice, now notice, what, what do you do? And notice, Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that delivereth me unto thee hath the greater sin. Now notice this answer. It's, uh, it's two things. One, it's the truth. <laughs> right? It's the truth. All right? And two... It's, notice the submission of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember what we read in Matthew? Do you not think I could pray to my father, Peter, and he would send me 12 legions of angels? It wouldn't take 12 legions. It wouldn't take a legion. He has all the heavenly hosts and power of heaven at his disposal. And he is suffering these things at these cruel and unjust hands. And notice, and from then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Oh, they played the poli the they played they played the political line, didn't they? How you like that? We're gonna to go to Caesar and accuse you of treason, Pilate. Here the king of the kingdom offers them the kingdom. I believe it's a legitimate offer. It wasn't just a little while ago. They were putting palm leaves down in the street. Hosanna! Hosanna! Huh? Right? Now the cry is what? We have no king but Caesar. Now notice if you will please. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in the place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabba, Gabba, 
and it was the preparation of the Passover. <laughs> you got to love this. They had no business doing anything like this. This was to be the preparation of the Passover. What are these guys doing? I mean, how bad can the mockery get? It's bad enough they're doing what they're doing. But on the preparation of the Passover, that celebrated what? Their exodus from Egypt, a world power. And here they're saying what? Crucify our king and give us a robber and a murderer. Now, how bad can it get? How dark can this be? And notice, if you will, then Pilate therefore heard these things. He brought Jesus forth. And notice in verse, um, now notice, remember, he said, behold the man. Now he says what? Behold your king. You say, well, well why would he do that? Because in this soldier's mind, there's no way you would crucify your king. You know, you, you would not crucify your king. Talk about treason. Right? I mean, how hi, 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 the hypocrisy is so thick here, isn't it? And notice, and they cried away with him, away with him, crucify him. And Pilate saith unto them, shall I crucify you? This, this is uh, mind-boggling even to the, uh, this, this wicked uh, governor. This, this uh, soldier, he can't imagine subjects revolting against their king. Imagine if you revolt against Caesar. Unthinkable. Unthinkable. Oh, but not God's people. <laughs> and this is after God dealt with them. The 70 years brought them back. Built a what? A temple. They didn't like it very much. It wasn't like the glorious temple of Solomon. Still can't talk to him, doesn't talk to him for 400 years. Then we send the very Son of God. And what do they do? Try to destroy him. Here's the king of the kingdom. And notice, the chief priests answered, we have no king but Caesar, and boy, are they ever going to get Caesar. They're going to get Caesar in the likeness of the Antichrist. You see that, um, that, uh, um, that image that Daniel is talking about interpreting for them. That image. That doesn't get completely fulfilled till we get through those seven years of tribulation. And the old Roman Empire is going to be resurrected again through the Antichrist. And they're going to get Caesar. They're going to get exactly what they're asking for, unfortunately. Okay, you following this so far? Here's the king of the kingdom. Now, I'd like you to, to look with me, if you will, before this event. And look with me in the book of John, chapter 18. John, chapter 18. Our Lord is before Caiaphas. Peter has just denied him three times. Remember Peter? Well, to prison and to death I'll follow thee. And notice if you're in verse 28, 18, 28, Gospel of John. I want to show you these things. What are we to do in this environment? What are we to do in this atmosphere? What's our res responsibility? We're servants of the king. You can't get a better example than Jesus himself. We don't have the power 
to call on the Father for 12 legions of angels, do we? No, we don't. And you say, well, that makes it harder. Oh, my friends, no. If you have the, all he had to do was think it for a second, it's over. One thought. It says, by the word of his mouth, he created the world. One thought. Do you understand the type of, of subjection this would take? And control this would take? So what's the prevailing, what is the prevailing um, interest or issue here? Well, we saw in Matthew earlier that the scriptures might be fulfilled. That the things that the Father commanded him to say and do, he did no more, no less. This was the Father's will. This is the kingdom, and this is what we're to follow. Now notice, if you will, please, in chapter 18, and notice, if you will, in verse 30, they answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. That's not much of a charge. What's that tell you? They really have nothing. They haven't brought any charges. Uh, that, that was uh, the cry from uh, Well, what evil hath he done? <laughs> what, what, what's the evil? What's he done? That never got answered, did it? They didn't have anything. But yet here they are offending the Passover of all things. And acclaiming a world government when the Passover was God taking them and exiting them away from a world power, Egypt. Hmm. Now notice, if you will, please, in verse 31, Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. And the Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. <laughs> well, sounds like it does. It, it, that's what they've been planning all along. Scripture tells us they were trying to plan how to kill him. <laughs> that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spoke, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king? Let's get to the bottom of this. Uh, I really feel bad for Pilate. <laughs> he just can't get out of this. I'm showing you this portion of Scripture for a reason. There is an example of the king to us here. And Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? You know, that's what happens when you test omniscience. You're going to lose every time. Then answered, Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What, have, what, what did you do? <laughs> Everybody's pretty upset here. What in the world did you do? Now notice, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. You know, I wish believers would understand that. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight? But I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from here. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the what? Bear witness to the truth. This is an example to us. This is what Daniel was doing with Nebuchadnezzar, with Belshazzar, with Darius, Cyrus. We're to bear witness to the truth in the most subject manner. Submission, even under these unjust circumstances. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Uh, he is not stopped. 
or quit doing or detours or gets distracted from what the Father sent him to do. He was sent to bear witness to the truth. You know what? Jesus Christ said this, As I was sent into the world, what? Even so send I you. We're to be his witnesses. We're to bear witness to the truth. We're to leave men with the truth. Daniel said to Nebuchadnezzar, Thou art that head of gold. And here's what's going to happen. Here's the interpretation, O king. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Well, that's where it should have stopped. True justice would have stopped right there, right? Now, let's look in the book of 1 Timothy, please. 1 Timothy. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 6, verse 11. We have this uh, section. This is couched in a very interesting place. Uh, this is couched in a warning against covetousness. And the worldly covetousness, and boy, if, the, if there is ever covetousness today, it, it ever was, it is today more than ever, isn't it? Uh, we've moved from being spoiled rotten to entitlement. Well, I deserve this and deserve, on what basis? I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. That's why I'm here. It's a, it is quite an idol, covetousness. Now, after that warning, and that warning, by the way, is to believers, not unbelievers. This book is not written to unbelievers. In fact, it's written to leadership. But notice in verse 11 of chapter 6 of 1 Timothy, but thou, O man of God, flee these things. When I think of flee these things, I think of Joseph. Remember Potiphar's wife? Cornered him. How can I, how can I do this sin against God and against my master? I just wish he would have took his coat with him on the way out. <sighs> Nuts. But anyhow, <laughs> bet he wished he had that moment back for a second. But nonetheless, he stood even in the midst of those circumstances. Um, and, and notice, if you will, these are examples. But pursue after what? Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance, meekness. Um, are, these, um, are these characteristics valued today in our society? Not at all. Not one bit. Uh, those are run over like a tank. No one cares about meekness today or godliness or faithfulness. Patience. I got to watch me on that one myself. That's one of my weaknesses. Um, righteousness. Now, if you can get away with it, do it. That's the, that's the philosophy of the day, isn't it? Sure it is. Sure it is. Let's go see what we can get away with. There's no idea of any of this. Does that change who we are in our kingdom? No. Where to stand? Now notice, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life unto which thou art also called and hast professed a good profession among many witnesses. Who's writing this? Paul. Paul. Where? Smack in the middle of the Roman Empire. We don't change to the circumstances. Daniel and his three friends didn't change to the circumstances. And notice, I command thee in the sight of God who maketh all things alive and before Christ Jesus. Who? Before Pontius Pilate did what? witnessed a good confession. 
that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable unto the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That's Paul's answer to those churches in that area. John would have a few things to say to him too, wouldn't he? And notice, if you will, who only hath immortality dwelling in the light, which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Witness a good what? Confession. And what was the confession of our Lord Jesus Christ? That for this reason came I into the world, and for this purpose to do what? Bear witness to the truth. Nebuchadnezzar, I'm going to give you the truth. This is the interpretation. It's not my interpretation. This is God's word. Thou art that head of gold, and here's what's going to happen. Right? And he doesn't leave anything out. And may I say, brethren, we're called to do the same, to witness a good confession. Jesus Christ said, I am the way. I am the what? The truth. I am the life. He came in grace and truth. And his name is true and faithful. Okay. All right, let's look in the book of um, Luke now, if you will, please. Let's look in the book of Luke. Book of Luke, chapter 23. I tell you what. I think that's going to be reiteration. I would like to use my time more efficiently. Turn to the book of Matthew. Back to Matthew. Back to Matthew for just a moment. Chapter 23 and into 24. Matthew chapter 20, 23, verse 37. Matthew 23, 37. Jesus has just quoted woes on the Pharisees and the scribes, some of which would be, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither permit the, them that are entering to go in. <laughs> Woe unto you! <laughs> All right. Now, notice, if you will, here's the king. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I'm in verse 37 of Matthew 23. Thou that what? Killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings. Oh, these are terrible words. And ye would not. I mean, what does it take? Really? King of the kingdom has to quote doom over his own city. <laughs> and notice, behold, your house is what? You want to know what that looks like? Go read the book of Ezekiel where the presence of the Lord moves from inside the Holy of Holies right on out of the ta temple, right on out of the gate, right on out of the city, right on out of the country. Mm -hmm. That's desolate. Mm -hmm. What he says to Hosea, you've departed from me, but I've, now I've departed from you. Ichabod is written over the door. The oh. Lord hath departed. Uh, look here in verse 39. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him 
show, show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be what? I, I want us to, I, why am I bringing this out? This is the king of the kingdom. Here's his city, Jerusalem. City of Salem, city of peace, and it's the most besieged city in history. Our Lord has to bring in Nebuchadnezzar to what? Burn it down? Our Lord has to quote doom over this city, over this place again. Herod's temple. Because they would not. Those, those words. As a hen gathereth her chickens under her, but ye would not. Um, you know, there's a lesson about this. I think we need to think about it. And pray for the church today. Really. The church is kind of going the way of the world, isn't it? There's not a lot of uh, keeping the and in, in, in interpreting the scriptures. Yeah. Uh, the main thrust isn't the truth. It's something else. It's entertainment. It's this over here, that over there. Uh, you see our Lord here. He's in subjection. He was sent to what? Bear witness of the truth. He was sent to die on the cross of Calvary. He had to take the abuse and the injustice of the worldly government. But he did all that the Father commanded him to do and say. Now we're sent as he was sent. We're sent as Daniel was sent. To bear witness. To the truth. Yeah, but pastor, the politics is terrible, and the economy is awful, and this is happening, and this is happening over here, and, and across the, oh, it's terrible. Yeah, sure, it's terrible. <laughs> What's that got to do with what you and I are supposed to be doing? That doesn't change his agenda. What's his agenda? Well, it hasn't changed. Go back to the book of Matthew here, <laughs> chapter 28. There's something we need to be busy doing. And look in chapter 28, 18. Notice, mark the word authority and power. And notice, and Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, that's the 500 that met him, finally met him in Galilee. Had a little trouble getting the leadership out of the graveyard. Um, angel, what are you doing here? That's empty. <laughs> what are you doing here? He's, he's risen as he said. Didn't you hear him? Didn't the women tell you? What are you doing here? And notice, if you will, <laughs> all authority is given unto what? Me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to what? Observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you, and lo, I am what? with you always even unto the end of the age that's the king of the kingdom that's his parting words here in Matthew that's what we're left this is what the kingdom this is what the king of the kingdom has left to us that's what Daniel was doing he was standing for God and his kingdom Nebuchadnezzar, you're that head of gold. And this is what God's going to do. Okay. Let's have, a word of, let's have a word of prayer in closing. Our gracious God and heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege. And Father, help us to pursue righteousness, meekness, perseverance, patience, faithfulness, and to flee the things of this world and to witness a good witness and confession before men to witness the truth that men may know you and enter into his kingdom that is forever and ever 
Father, we thank you for these examples of Daniel, the example of the king himself. And Father, we just pray that you would bless us this hour. And Father, we pray that we would, we would move from here un, untim, unintimidated, ever steadfast in the things of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.